I will take an ugly win over an L any day of the week. Yo, ho, ho, Bills Mafia. Welcome to yet another edition of the Da Mafia Show. As always, your host, Dan Mitchell. Say that you're new here. I am an avid member of the Bills Mafia, and I put out content about the Buffalo Bills and the NFL in general on a regular basis. If that is your cup of tea, I highly recommend subscribing to this channel, and as always, smashing the ever-living f*** out of that like button. We did end up securing the dub against the Detroit Lions on Thanksgiving, and I am sitting here celebrating Victory Friday. Now, I'm sure I speak for several of us when I say that my blood pressure was through the roof, and I was convinced for the longest time that my Thanksgiving was about to be ruined. But this team's resilience ended up coming out on top. You did read that title correctly. We are going to be dissecting everything and anything about this game that I loved things that are still pissing me off. And then finally, to wrap up the episode, we are going to discuss the implications of the Vaughn Miller injury and how long most pundits are saying he's going to be out. Super excited to dive into that with you guys. Right before I do, I do have an announcement. The boys at the AFC East Roundtable are coming to Buffalo, New York for their very first event. Saturday, December 17th at 7 p.m. at Townhouse in Hamburg, Myself and TD Finn's talk, Richie and Master at Work are going to be there for Battle for the East. This is right before the Miami Dolphins and Buffalo Bills game, which is the following day, which will more than likely be flexed to primetime. Let's be honest with ourselves. There's going to be giveaways. There's going to be prizes. There's going to be a huge spread of food and an opportunity for you guys to meet us because I know we're super excited to meet you guys with all the love and support you've shown us in a long time. So say that you're interested is you can cop yourself a ticket right in the description. We really, really hope to see you there. 28 to 25, the Buffalo Bills have secured yet another dub, and we are currently sitting at 8-3 and three, and on top of the AFC East. There was a lot of times during this game uh, where I was very frustrated. I was tweeting a bunch of nonsense. I was in my feelings for what seems like for the past three to four weeks of Buffalo Bills football. But at the end of the day, the one thing that I feel like all of us should be proud of is, is the fact that we found a way to win. Now, there is no joke. You guys can check the receipts of my preview video, but I did say that this Detroit Lions offense was very, very good. They've been playing a lot of very good teams, very close. So going into the game, I knew that the Lions were going to make an impact, especially on the offensive side of the ball. Their defense was a bit more of a surprise. However, we'll get into that once I start dissecting things that really upset me about this game. But I want to start this off with a positive note because we did end up winning this game. Just a couple of shout outs for some of the players that we had here. Number one, we have to show some love to Devin Singletary. Once again, he has proven to be very effective as our RB1. I remember during the offseason, all of us were talking about trying to find a stud RB1 that can really complement Josh in the pass game. However, he has really lived up to what we expected of him for the past couple of years. 15 carries on 80 yards. Super, super efficient. Isaiah McKenzie. This guy is always good for at least two or three breakout games. Isaiah McKenzie was our leading receiver this entire game. There was a lot of the times where the Detroit Lions defense uh, literally had an answer for each and every single other playmaker that we had out there, but Isaiah McKenzie stepped up when we needed him. There were several plays where I saw that man was completely wide open, and he ran away with every single opportunity that he possibly could. Isaiah McKenzie deserves a massive, massive shout out. Next up, we have to go with Stephon Diggs. I mean, literally, play. I thought that I was about to have a heart attack when I saw Josh Allen drop back and deliver that absolute laser. It's right to Diggs, right to secure that field goal position for us to overall win the game. Good things happen when you go to the best player on that field. And with the Josh Allen and the Stephon Diggs chemistry, right now they are the best combined passer rating with both of those two, uh, second to Patrick Mahomes and Travis Kelsey. We just have to be very, very thankful that Diggs, at least, has remained healthy throughout the season thus far because I'm really not sure what this offense would do without him just with how plagued our team has been in the first place. And same with Josh Allen, right? There's no question that this man is not the same 
ever since that elbow injury that occurred against the New York Jets, right? I mean, he was missing a couple of throws here and there. Like, the zip really wasn't on his ball as much as we're used to. Of course, aside from that one throw, this man literally threw a football 41 yards, a direct laser. I'm pretty sure I read something. It was like 54 miles an hour. It was perfectly placed, and then now I'm even questioning if his elbow was hurt in the first place. But overall, I was scrolling through Twitter. I saw a bunch of people upset with our offense and play calls, etc. But, I mean, he ended up delivering, right? I mean, a total of 350 yards. He accounted for three touchdowns, and he found a way to win. He found a way to win. And that was even including after we had two very huge vacancies on the offensive line. Number one, Mitch Morris being out and Ryan Bates taking over his place, and then later into the game when Deion Dawkins ended up going out, and we had Quessenberry out there, who is an absolute liability to Josh Allen. Ryan Bates wasn't playing his appropriate position. He was locked up at center, and for the most part, Josh was really running for his life. So with him still being able to deliver that while still nursing an elbow injury, I think that we have to be proud. I really, really do. This team was so resilient in being able to pull out a dub, especially with, okay, the snowstorm that occurred, then they had to go to Detroit, they lost a home game, they beat the Browns, had to go back to Buffalo, two days later, had to go back to Detroit, very, very limited practice, and then we end up pulling up two dubs, all while half of our team is literally in a body bag. I feel like a lot of us need to be very proud of what this team has been putting together. So as far as defensive shoutouts, Ed Oliver has arrived, ladies and gentlemen. This guy had an absolute monster game, and really just overall our defensive tackles. They have really been carrying this Buffalo Bills defensive line now that Von Miller is going out, and thank God that they are being effective. I mean, Oliver, six tackles. He had two for a loss, one sack, two QB hits, and that safety that went down, which was a massive, massive turning point in the game. Daquan Jones had a damn game. A.J. Klein did very well, especially for this is his third team this season. He probably only had one or two practices, but I thought that he ended up filling in very well for Edmonds. Very, very well for Edmonds. Still not the best, but, I mean, I'm going to have to give a shout-out to A.J. Klein. He did a tremendous job. Milano did fantastic. And then overall, we have to give the final shout out to Tyler Bass, Mr. bass matic I saw something interesting. I was listening to Joe Marino's podcast early this morning, and he is convinced that Tyler Bass missing that extra point was the reason that we won that game. I know, super crazy. Definitely listen to his podcast on Lockdown Bills. But really just a short summary, he said by him missing it, it required... It made the Detroit Lions less aggressive and not having to transition into that four down offense. And if they were to get stuck in the red zone or a little bit before, they would have settled for a field goal in hopes that we would have went right into, in hopes that we would have went right into overtime. Um, say, for example, that he were to make that extra point, then they may have been a little bit more aggressive on some of those plays. It's most likely a stretch, but very funny to think about that him missing that extra point was the reason that we won that game. And then, of course, him sinking in that 51-yarder so to make sure that we left that city 8-3. and three. Now, I mean, things that I didn't like, I mean, like, there was a lot. There was definitely a lot. I wasn't necessarily happy uh, with our secondary. And so I'm not going to downplay the Lions' offense. They are very, very talented. But, man, you could see these injuries just absolutely pile up. Poor Dane Jackson. That guy has been getting absolutely targeted by every single quarterback, and he has been getting burned. Benford has been doing okay, I suppose, but both of these guys' youth is really showing out because they're just not playing the ball very well, right? I think that they might be trying to go for the Hollywood feel. They might be trying a little too hard to get an interception, make a big splash play, and not going back to the fundamentals of like knocking the ball down. Um, it just goes with inexperience right within there so I mean not not particularly happy with that so Edmonds being out very rough every single game that that man is out the middle of the field absolutely gets torched right absolutely gets torched when he's out there those plays don't happen quite as often because he's very much slept on when it comes into overall coverage right next up missed tackles I was scrolling through Twitter the other day and I saw this that is right this is the percentage of missed tackles on our team. I'm sure you can see A.J. Epinesa right there at 
not ideal, not ideal whatsoever. One of the biggest criticisms of Edmonds for the past couple of years is, oh, he's always missing his tackles. He's not doing well. Not the case this year. This man is the best tackler that we have on this defense, statistically, as of right now. The Buffalo Bills need need to clean this up. We have three divisional games coming. Thank God the New England Patriots offense is absolutely abysmal. So let's just hope that we can get these injuries cleaned up. And for the love of God, tackle. Now this defense, I know like I'm not the kind of guy that's going to give excuses, right? But when you account for the fact that literally every single one of our starters and just about every single one of our backups has missed time this year, has missed time. I believe the only two that have not missed time is Taron Johnson and Daquan Jones. Those are the only players that are on our 53-man roster that have not missed time. Think about that, right? It makes it very difficult for us to be able to dominate teams like we expect the Buffalo Bills to do. So really when I'm reading things that fans are saying, like I know that we had the hype all offseason that we are just anticipating that we need to dominate every single team that we play. Just look at it. Like look at that context. Like and like you're talking the perfect recipe, but you're missing some of the main ingredients each and every single game that we play. We're not going to see that. Same thing goes with our offense, right? Like now that we have our offensive line is not doing so hot. Let's hope that Deion Dawkins is going to be okay here with a little bit. We miss out on Jamison Crowder. We have Jay Kumaro out of there. Like, we have the perfect recipe, but we're missing the main ingredients, right? Like, we're missing all pro talent. We're not just missing, like, a run-in-the-mill, like, average player. It seems like the majority of our injuries have only been to our, like, all pro and pro bowl level players, and it's been rough. But we got to be proud of this team, man. We have to be proud of this team. I mean, literally, when you look at this, these last three games, and where everybody in Buffalo has been complaining and has been upset, the last three games that we have played, we're still putting up 28 points per game and 450 yards and 415 yards per game. Both are number two in the NFL. When you account for the fact that out of every loss we've had is a combined of eight points, we still have a very efficient offense, and this team is beating all odds with those missing ingredients and still finding a way to win. When the Buffalo Bills get healthy, we're going to get that dominant football back. But for now, I love watching what this team can do when their back is against the wall. Last story, I'm sure everybody ended up having a heart attack when we saw that Vaughn Miller was carted off the field. News just broke today um, that it is not an ACL thank God, but it seems to be some sort of a meniscus tear. We still do not know exactly how long he is going to be out. We have Ian Rappaport saying that he might be out three to four weeks. Some are saying six to eight. Some are saying the entire season. So we're really not going to know what's going to happen with Von Miller until Monday. Really hoping that he can bounce back. I really, really am, but say, for example, that he cannot. We just need to hope that the influence that he put on Gregory Rousseau and our defensive tackles can continue their dominance, which they have been, look, which they have been amazing these past couple of games. We're just going to have to find a way. And it also helps that Trey White looks like that he's slowly but surely starting to reintroduce himself into the defense. If Jordan Poyer can stay healthy, if Edmonds and Milano can stay healthy, I think that we will be okay. But I mean, as for now, we just need to send our prayers up and hope that Vaughn makes a speedy recovery, not just uh, for the game of football, but also uh, for him. So I'm sure that he wants to be out there more than anybody else. Well, Bills Mafia, thank you so much for tuning in to yet another edition of the Dom Mafia Show. You know I always love your support. Just make sure you sound off in the comments and let me know your thoughts about the victory, about the Vaughn Miller injury. Subscribe to this channel if you have not already. Smash the ever-living out of that like button and before i let you go you better always remember let's go buffalo